In this video, I'm going to show you how I made these awesome sliding barn doors out of some recycled patio door panels. And this completes my new wall in my new garage workshop. These are the patio door panels I'm using. They measure about 76 inches tall and they are 36 inches wide. The first thing I'm going to make is the hardware for the barn door rollers and it's going to be made out of this quarter inch by one inch wide steel plate and the first thing I'm going to do is cut them to length and then I'm going to drill three holes in them, two for mounting to the door panels and one for mounting the wheels to. For the wheels, I'm going to be using roller blade wheels, and they are pretty cheap. They already have bearings in them, and they roll very smoothly and quietly. All roller blade wheels use the same bearing, and it's got an 8mm inside diameter, which means I do need to use 8mm hardware here. With those done, the next thing I'm going to make is the track for the wheels to roll in, and I'm going to use this 1 inch PVC pipe cut in half. So first thing I'll do is mark a line down the length of it, and then use that line as a guide for drilling some holes. And I'm going to use these holes to attach the PVC pipe to a piece of 2x4, and that's going to help me run it through the table saw. I drilled one hole larger than the other and that allows the head of the screw to go through one wall of the PVC pipe but not through the second wall which holds it tight to the 2x4. For the rail I cut out this piece of wood from a 2x4. I want the PVC track to sit down flush into this piece of wood, so I've marked out on here where to carve out. On the right here is going to be the wall, then there's going to be a gap for some weather stripping. The door starts here and ends here. The center line of the door I've marked out here, and I want the PVC track to be on center with the door. So this shaded area is where I'm going to cut out so that this can drop down into this piece of wood. I cut this much out on the table saw, and now I'm going to clean it up with the router. I got the track all screwed to the wood, and I also pre-drilled some holes for mounting the track to the wall. At this point, I was attaching the rail with three inch construction screws, but I felt that that wasn't enough and later I came back with these six inch long timber screws and drove those in, which made it much more secure. Next, I measured up from the floor the 76 inches plus half an inch clearance, and that's where I marked where the top of the panel would be on each bracket. To attach each bracket to the panels, I just used the brackets themselves as drilling guides, and I marked out on the panel where each hole needed to be drilled. And to hold the brackets onto the panels, I'm going to use sh short lag screws.
With the doors hung, I can now move on to the weather stripping. I mounted a 2x6 to the edge of the door opening on both sides, and I shimmed it out a little bit away from the wall so that I could get it nice and straight with the door. And I'll just come back and fill that gap with spray foam at the end. But that 2x6 gives me a nice surface for the weather stripping to attach to. I ordered this replacement weather stripping from the manufacturer of those door panels. And the way that it works is this piece will mount to the wall and this piece will be screwed to the back of the door panel. And as the door comes closed, it'll slide inside. And that flexible part provides the seal and it's also locked together so that the bottom of the door can't swing away from the wall. After mounting one side of the weather strip to the wall, I slid in the other piece of weather strip into that one and then close the door panel so that I can mark on the panel where that weather strip needed to go and then I screwed that weather strip onto that panel and then repeated the same thing on the other side. For the weather strip at the top of the door, I just cut this piece of wood and then put a small cut with a table saw in it down the length. And then this is just a door weather strip from the home center. And I push that down in the saw curve. And that'll be the holder for the top weather strip. With the doors closed, there's still a gap between the two, so to close that up, I'm gonna extend each panel a little bit. On the left panel, I'm just gonna screw on this strip of wood to extend it. And on the right panel, I made this trim piece, which will screw on to the right panel. And this nice piece of wood will overlap the two panels to make a nice trim piece. And on this piece, you can see I made a kerf right down the middle with the table saw, and that's where I can press in another one of those door weather strips, and that'll create the seal between the two panels when they're closed. I added a chamfer on the leading edge of this piece of wood and also the same on the other side. I've got a 45 here and that just helps the door not clash into itself when it closes. The last piece of weather strip I want to add is this door sweep along the bottom here to seal the door to the concrete floor. And it looks like I'm going to have to cut away some of this weather strip over here so that this can slide by first.
After operating the door a few times, I decided a bottom door guide would be beneficial. So I printed this on my 3D printer. And the way that it works is it gets screwed to the floor through these two slots, which provide a little bit of adjustment. The door will ride on this surface, pushing it up against the wall. And since it was easy, I added this carriage bolt through the center of it, which compresses the whole part. And hopefully that'll add some strength to the 3D printed layers. Probably overkill, but it was easy to add. With the door done, I'm almost ready to move back in and I can't wait to get started on building and laying out this new shop workspace. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. As the door panel comes closed, this will slide. Oh, my clamp's in the way.